Hey there, once again, YouTube. I know I haven't been around much lately. I'm sorry about that, but I'm still monitoring volcanoes and tectonic hazard areas every single day, basically. Uh, don't forget about my website here, monitorsize.net. A link to it is in the description box below if you haven't checked it out already. There's a lot of good stuff on here. And there's even a bunch of stuff that I do put out every once in a while that I don't make a video about. So if you haven't seen a video um, for a while from me, just go to the many pages on my website where I do post data every now and then when something interesting happens. For example, under the more drop down menu, you have the monthly volcano updates, which I am about to do one tonight for the month of December. I have taken off the quake statistics link that I had on here that I used to do yearly earthquake statistics. Um, I'm going to try to do that soon for every single year, including 2019, but that might take a while for me to actually put together and to update. So don't have that right now, but the monthly volcano update should be out soon. And I d am going to do an uplift subsidence update for Long Valley Caldera, Yellowstone Caldera, and the Ridgecrest Coastal Volcanic Field area in California. Now, so right now, Steamboat Geyser, 2019 is over, guys, and Steamboat Geyser erupted 48 times in 2019, shattering the 2018 record and even before that, the 1964 record. And again, we did see 48 eruptions. Here's the last eruption of 2019, which occurred on December 27th or December 26th if you're in the mountain time zone. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of eruptions. 2019 was definitely the most active year on record for Steamboat Geyser, with the 2018-2019 eruption period definitely the most active, with a total of 80 eruptions during that time period from 2018 through 2019. Steamboat eruptions are still continuing. We have not seen one yet for 2020. But when you do, when you see an eruption, go straight here to my Steamboat Geyser eruptions and go to the new Steamboat Eruptions 2020 page. <clears throat> That's where I will put all the recent Steamboat Geyser eruptions. Again, we have not seen one yet for 2020. However, but we are seeing those. Remember, I talked about those Steamboat Geyser precursors where the temperature in the outflow channel shows minor eruptions leading up to a major eruption. Boom, there's an eruption right here. Then it kind of goes down to uh, the normal levels. And then we see the precursors again. This was a very short precursor activity just of like two or three days right here usually lasts about three to four days you'll see the precursors and then the eruption will happen here is right now you notice the precursors have been occurring since about the the late day on the second and right now is 7 50 p.m pacific time january 8th 2020 so it is looking like here's the past 24 hours it is looking like steamboat geyser will probably erupt tonight i mean these precursors can last a little while but i'm fairly certain it will erupt tonight i'm going to try to get a um a, a look at that of the live seismic stream from swarm i won't be putting it live on youtube but i'm going to try to record that if i do have the time i might not but then again past seven days it's been lasting almost seven days about six days of precursors so it definitely should erupt tonight so keep an eye out for that that's not what i want to talk about today though i want to talk about something very interesting that showed up uh, on the seismograph stations at yellowstone uh okay so here's today here's right now i noticed on ytp and yla this little buddy right here notice this event right here i thought this was a mine blast possibly from wyoming which shows up on ypk sometimes you can tell this event is right here but then i look I looked in swarm and the size of program waves here let's take a look at that right now okay so here we are on the seismic program waves with data taken from the six nearby stations. YTP was the closest to see this seismic event. Let me zoom out a little bit just to get a full view of this strange, strange low frequency event. It's not an earthquake. It's not an ice quake. It's, I don't know what it is, but it is a low frequency event. As I'll show you in the seismic program swarm. YTP was the closest station to see this. You could tell even stations as far away as YLT and YPK, which are many, many, many miles away from Yellowstone Lake, felt this event. So this is definitely not a surface event. Definitely occurred underground. Uh, I don't know exactly what this was. Definitely not a quarry blast because they don't allow quarry blasts or mine blasts or anything like that in Yellowstone National Park. Let's take a look at this in the Seismic Program Swarm from Seismic Station YTP and Borehole 208. Okay, let me close out of some of these real quick. Let's see here. All right, so here we have YTP. Here, let me zoom in just real fast. 
So here we have data from YTP, the closest seismic station to the low frequency event that was detected on seismograph stations a few hours ago at Yellowstone. And notice right here, it starts right about here. And look at those lower frequencies, guys. And I have no filter set on here at all. Let me zoom out with the spectrogram. Remember, spectrogram shows frequency content and time period and the color range is power. Again, if you look in the description box below and go to the link talking about what are spectrograms, you can learn a lot about spectrogram plots from that page on my website. And it's pretty much if you just use this stuff every day and do this analysis yourself every day, you'll, you can tell that spectrograms show frequency content and power along with the time range. So, YTP, closest station to this emergent low frequency event which started, I'm going to say, about 0115 UTC and ended at about 0117, about halfway through. So I'm going to say it lasted about two and a half minutes or so. Two and a half minutes. And you could tell, look at these lower frequencies, guys. Remember, the waveform spacings are frequencies. And look at that. Pretty low right there. Look at that. Dominant frequencies rest between... Let's see here, about one, about 0 0.9 hertz and ends at about 2.2 hertz or so, with the main power being right at about 1.25 hertz. Very specific right there. So it's a very strange low frequency event that was detected on the seismograph stations at Yellowstone. I don't know what it could be, guys. Here's Borehole 208, which was kind of close to this event. And you can see the, it shows the event right here. It looks a little more emergent because the station's a little bit further away. And look at that. And the fact that it showed up on YPK and YLT, which are many, many miles away, shows that this low-frequency event is very real, was not a surface event. So I am unsure exactly what this means or what this could be. But we did see a low-frequency event at Yellowstone, guys. Very, very intriguing. Not very strong, though. It was pretty weak, but still. I find that pretty intriguing. So what do you think that could be, guys? Dominant frequencies, you can see that spike, almost perfect spike at about 1.25 hertz. Very, very strange. Almost looks kind of like a fake anthropogenic signal, which is like a human-caused signal, but it's not because it showed on many different stations many miles away. So as to what this could be, I'm not sure, but again, low-frequency event detected at Yellowstone National Park. Let me know what you guys think of it. Also, here in Bothell and Woodenville, Washington, starting on January 11th, it says rain right now, but temperatures start to dip down. We are going to start to see some snow. Monday, Sunday through Monday, we're not going to get too much snow, probably a trace to an inch or so. But when, Mon when Wednesday through Friday come along, there are going to be some more snowstorms coming in where we could get multiple inches of snow. The first snow in the Seattle area basically was today. I uh, was driving to go get some pizza, and I was stuck in a blizzard. I mean, nothing really stuck to the ground, but it was coming down so hard. Big flakes. I was like, wow, this is pretty crazy. I love snow, so if you live in the Seattle area, you're going to get many, many chances over the next week or two to get a good amount of snow. But we'll keep a close eye on that. Let's see if anything else happened while I was recording. Nothing much else right now. Remember, Steamboat Geyser is set to erupt tonight, and I am putting out my monthly update on my website very, very soon. So keep an eye out for that. It's probably either going to be tonight or tomorrow night that that's going to be up. And other stuff's going on, too. And again, sorry, guys. I had a kidney stone that I've been dealing with. So I haven't been able to be around too, too often. Uh, the kidney stone is almost too large to pass. So it was quite painful. I almost blacked out from the pain. Had to go to the ER. I'm doing okay right now. They set me up with some pain meds and some other medication to help the kidney stone pass. I have another one stuck in my kidney that hasn't come out yet. So it's very painful, guys. Like, literally the worst pain I've ever felt in my life by far. So I hope you guys have a great day. God bless, and I will be around, and I'll see you later.